yet more cases of babies being born with an unusual defect. It's about the power and potential of human biology and where human evolution is headed. Vikari is about the birth of babies around the world with a similar set of deformities um, and this sparks a worldwide panic because some people believe it to be a pandemic much like what is happening right now. Um, there are rumors in the story that the Vikari children may even possess uh, supernatural abilities so uh, some people want to harm the Vikari uh, and some people, people want to uh, protect them or even use them for their own purposes. Um, the, so this story is happening all around the world. So in, uh, in this particular uh, story, we are following what's happening in Sri Lanka. So it's, Sri Lanka is like a microcosm of, of, of the entire world in this story. Um, when we first made, we shot it, it was in 2015 and we had no idea the storyline would become so relevant to, uh, to today, today's world. So Vicari winning Best Short Film at Screenfest was fantastic and uh, a big surprise. Um, when you're actually making a film, you never have a sense of how it's going to be received when you finally do put it in front of an audience. and. I think that's where the adage comes from that, you know, as a director you make a film primarily for yourself uh, and everything after that is entirely out of your control. And so Sandra and I had made a film that we were proud of and we thought it was a good film. Uh, I just don't think we realised it was a film that was going to win Best Short Film at, you know, one of the best genre fests in the world. So, uh, you know, that was a fantastic surprise. <laughs> The most interesting thing about being part of uh, the crew for Vicari for me was uh, this was the first time that I was involved in a science fiction project and it, it was a really amazing concept and uh, working with um, two people who were so in tune with what they wanted, Sandun and Charlie, was a great experience. But, um, in terms of the work that was done, um, it was real exciting because this was the first time I was doing wire work on a film. I had uh, done wire work on stage before, but like I said, first time on film. And uh, the system used was something that Sandun and Charlie had designed themselves. So, um, plus they had to think about the CGI um, aspect of it as well. That's another new thing for me, having to act with, uh, uh, with, uh, with these things in mind. Was the character of Dr. Sulakshana an easy role to embody? Um, I wouldn't say it was difficult because I had experience working at an NGO environment and that really helped. Um, and also, my character was about being very much empathetic to the situation and to the specific needs of these children uh, who are caught up in the middle of, midst of uh, all of this. And I would say I'm a um, natural bleeding heart. <laughs> so, um, it wasn't hard being Sulakshana. What was a challenge, if at all, was trying to keep up the intensity of the scenes and uh, really going at it while working in a totally chilled out environment. I could not have hoped for a better first film experience. I remember having so much fun with all of the other Vicari kids, like so, so much fun. I remember at one of the primary film locations that we were at, there were all of these old cars that we would just like go around, explore, have a blast. And I also got to do this a lot with my hands, which made me feel incredibly cool. And everyone was just so amazing. The cast, the crew, hands down, fantastic experience. When I first walked into that room and saw one, made my blood run cold. Yeah, my role, Professor Hammeroff, um, was very much filmed in isolation uh, here in London. Uh, I didn't get to go on any of the, the glamorous location shoots that you see in the, in the final film. Um, but even so, um, it was a really interesting, very intense experience, actually. I think it kind of aided me in, in, in putting together this, uh, 
this character who, who very much uh, is a scientist, works in isolation, works uh, very much in a logical manner, uh, uh, researching on his own, and I, I just built that into the character. It's an intense shoot. I, I remember uh, there, there was a lot of dialogue. Um, we had a very short space of time to do it, and um, it was a, ca a case of absorbing everything like a sponge. Sandler and Charlie and I met at film school at the London Film Academy uh, more than a decade ago now. And we did a really nice short back in the day called Sia with uh, uh, Troyanza starring in it. We're now having a reunion of a, quite a few of the key workers of Sia with, with the new project Atari. Um, that's really fun. So what was the biggest challenge? Well, certainly Sun, Moon and Charlie because they both had a clear vision on what the film is meant to look like, how the VFX are meant to look like and, and feel like. And on one hand, it's obviously great working for a director and a producer who have a clear vision, but on the other hand, it's fairly difficult to then not only get it right, but also get it right in, in exactly the way they want it. And that combined with the remote working, me sitting here in Germany and Sandun obviously in Sri Lanka and Charlie in, in England, uh, it was quite a challenge getting this level of intimate communication going uh, without meeting each other. Well, I was in charge of casting the young actors of the film and what we looked for was basically talent, ability uh, and of course a certain physicality. They were supposed to be able to perform in a certain way so those were the two main things that we considered. The footage was was pretty spectacular uh, when I got that through. Uh, looking at lots of disturbed, dystopian f shots of children with no eyes and no eyeballs, it was not what you get every day to work with. The music I, I wanted to help support the narrative, and, and for the Vicari to have its own sort of sonic character and and this sense of foreboding throughout the film. Um, so hopefully the score brings that edge to the film. In, in 2015 I was just starting off and, and um, I would say from then onwards it has been so exciting to see how far this has come. It was actually awesome because uh, I didn't really have so much of interaction with the whole cast and crew but with some uh, I mainly worked very closely with the director himself in getting all the looks together, in getting all the colours and the shapes and the kind of uh, finish that he wanted in place. So it was uh, mainly interacting with him, which was, which was a lot of fun, I must say. The most difficult scene uh, for me was the uh, action sequence which comes at the end of the film because uh, there were a lot of elements that we were dealing with, uh, such as um, the practical effects and the visual effects and uh, action choreography that we had to deal with. So that was, uh, we shot that for two days, so uh, that was a, a bit difficult, but ultimately very rewarding. I do remember having a lot of fun on set because everyone was uh, real fun, especially um, Andre Pereira, he's such a funny actor, he's got such a good sense of humor. and. Um, I particularly remember one scene of his that has to do with uh, fish buns. You guys will have to watch it to actually figure it out, but that was um, a real fun scene to shoot. For me, the most interesting thing was, it was a scene that we shot at the beach where I had to carry a child and I was running, jumping over rocks, uh, running on hot sand, barefoot, um, while helicopters, the bad guys were chasing us. The most difficult scene that I had was when I essentially had to have uh, a staring contest with the camera and it was just so hard not to blink. It's a very thought-provoking film. The interesting aspects for me was this notion that, that that if something is different, people feel the need to eradicate it 
or fight it rather than try and understand it and work with it. Picari gets released online on December the 15th on sci-fi channel Dust. So you'll be able to watch it on YouTube and Facebook. And we just can't wait to see how it's received.